Hi, welcome back on to your mats. Join me in a seat whenever you're ready. We're going to get started in a seated meditation pose. So come into some sort of crisscross position with your legs if that's comfortable. Um, you can slide your heels a little bit away from your body to create some more space through your knees, through your hips, or you can pull them in nice and tight. Just find a position that allows you to get comfortable. Right away, take a breath. And let it go with an exhale. As you arrive in your seat, take a moment to loop your shoulders up, back and down, press them down towards the earth. Find a heaviness through your elbows and opening through your sternum, your collarbone, your chest. Backs of your palms are gently resting on the tops of your legs. And with each breath, see if you can start to straighten your spine just a little bit more. Inhale, pull the crown of the head all the way up. And then exhale, ground down through the sits bones. Let it go. Notice here if you're lifting through your chin or maybe tucking it, maybe you're leaning forward. See if you can find a nice straight spine, including through the uh, entire length of your neck. Rather than hurrying through these postures to kick it off today, we're going to get started a little bit slower. Bringing our awareness first to our breath. And then once you feel like you've actively slowed your breath down a little bit, then you can start to bring your awareness and your attention to your body. So as the breath slows, the body follows. And then check in, start with the pads of your fingertips. Maybe give them a little wiggle here, just notice what they feel like. Bring that awareness up through your arms to your shoulders. Again, reminding your shoulders to drop away from your ears, lengthening through your chest muscles, the sides of your neck. Then allow that awareness to have a downward current of energy as you bring the breath down through your spine, all the way through the base of your tailbone. Feel rooted here in this posture. Next, the awareness travels through your legs making its way all the way down to your toes. Maybe give them a little wiggle here. And then come into total stillness. You might find it difficult to find stillness here and a gentle sway or rock is perfectly fine. But if you feel a need to itch or scratch or reach for something or fix your hair or tuck in your shirt, just avoid it here. Just really bring your awareness to the stillness. I just counter. I was a hypocrite, I just scratched my face. <laughs> so sometimes our natural instincts kind of take hold and we find those movements attend to the little asks that our body gives us. But see if you can be in the driver's seat here and remind yourself that stillness is okay, just for a few breaths. The scratch can wait, the wiggle can wait. On your next breath, we're gonna to start to make circles with your nose. So moving in one direction first, starting with small little circles. Bringing some mobility through your neck. You can begin to make your circles a little bit bigger.
And then reverse, starting with big circles in the opposite direction. making your way to smaller and smaller circles. Until you return to stillness. Next, we're gonna cup our, our knees with our hands. You can keep your eyes closed here or open them, whatever is more comfortable for you. And we're gonna do that same circular sensation here, this time stirring the pot. So as you inhale, you're gonna lift your chest forward and exhale, press your belly button towards your back body. Inhale, similar to a cow pose here, really lifting through your chest. And then as you exhale, cat variation, arching through your back body. One more time around in this direction. Bring it on back through center and then we'll switch directions. See if you can keep both sit bones grounded here so that this movement is really coming from, from your center. One more time around in the circle. And bring it back through center. Take a breath. Next, go ahead and plant your left hand down by your side. You can place it on your mat or on a block or tent up on your fingertips. Bring your right fingertips all the way up and then catch your left ear. Come into a little bit of a trap stretch here. So you want your shoulder dropping away from your ear and then just tug a little bit of weight in your right hand as you pull your right ear towards your right shoulder. After a couple breaths, maybe you find a little bit more weight with the help of gravity, further, further lengthening this space between your ear and your neck, ear and your shoulder rather, that is your neck. And then go ahead and release and we'll switch to the other side. Right fingertips down, left fingertips first pull up. And then exhale, drop your left hand to your right ear and find a little bit of a gentle tug. Keep your breath steady. Maybe this time after a few breaths, you work on bringing the heel of your hand closer towards the earth. Pulling that shoulder a little bit further away from your ears. And then exhale and release to let it go. Next, we're gonna come into a seated twist. So just pull your right knee up and towards your chest. You can keep it here, or if you want a little bit more of a stretch through your glute, you can cross your right foot over top of your left thigh. Hug it in here. Stay facing forward or move into your twist by hooking your left elbow in the outside of your right arm. Right arm travels behind you. I think I said that wrong. Left elbow on the outside of your right leg and right arm travels behind you. Working to bring your chest towards the right side of your mat. Maybe your gaze follows. Continuing that sensation of lengthening through your left trap. And then go ahead and bring it back through center. We're gonna come into a seated shoelace pose. So ultimately you're gonna to work to stack your knees over top of one another. Heel toe your right ankle towards the left side of your mat. You're going to need to wiggle around a little bit, most likely here, to get your hips down on the earth. I sometimes find it helpful to lift myself up, cross the knees so that they're about stacked, and then sit back down into the pose and you'll feel a nice stretch through your outer glutes. 
If this isn't quite accessible to you, you can place blocks in between your knees or underneath both of your knees, so one under your left and then one in between, and that'll help you to find the release, the gravity pull, uh, downward pull, as well as the support through your knee joints and through your hips. So this is our shoelace pose or our cow face pose. Find a breath and let it go. Next, we're gonna come into our cow face pose with the arm variation. So right arm lifts up, tap your left shoulder and then swim your left arm behind you. Grab a strap, grab for your shirt or maybe interlace your fingertips towards one another and pull your elbows in towards center. Challenge here is to keep your spine nice and straight and your uh, hips or your sits bones grounded into the earth. A lot of a stretch through the outer hips and a lot of length through the back body. Start to notice the stretch through your tricep muscles and if you're not quite feeling it, pull those elbows in closer towards the midline. So you're pulling your right elbow in towards the right side of your head, left elbow in towards the left side body. And then when you're ready, Open up your arms and let it go. Moving to the other side, starting with our seated twist. So first, pull your left knee in towards your chest. Either plant your foot on the ground on the outside of your right shin or cross it over the outside of your left thigh, uh, right thigh, whichever one you prefer. Hug it in and hook the crook of your right elbow on the outside of your left knee and di dive your way into your twist. Bring your chest forward, square it towards the front edge of your mat, and then shoelace pose on the other side. So either uh, start to walk your feet out to opposite edges of the mat, or right away you can come onto your hands, work to stack your knees. So you're really zipping up your inner thighs here, almost as if you were sitting in a chair. And then as you sit your hips back down, you'll notice that nice big stretch, especially through the left outer hip. This one's really good to counterbalance the sitting that we do. Our hips usually bear the brunt and that usually leads to some sort of back pain or discomfort in our lower body. And then when you're ready, go ahead and lift your arms up. Left arm comes to your right shoulder, right arm swims behind. Maybe your fingertips interlace, maybe you grab a strap or maybe you just grab for your shirt. Another option would just be to energetically reach your fingertips towards one another. It's just helpful to deepen the stretch through your tricep muscle if you do have some sort of bind. So whatever works for you, there's a lot going on here. Breath stays front and center. Unwind, big opening through your fingertips. And then exhale, uncross your legs and we'll meet in a tabletop pose. Fingertips spread, find a couple of cat cows here. Notice the mobility through your spine. And then when you're ready, crawl your fingertips forward just a couple of inches, tuck your toes under, hover your knees off of the earth for five, four, three, two, and one, hips lift, downward facing dog. A 
Right away, find your breath as you find the length through the backs of your legs, the backs of your arms. Gaze is gonna come forward in between your hands and slowly drag your right foot forward. Drop your back knee down into your low lunge. You can untuck your back toes or keep them tucked if you prefer. Sweep your arms all the way up towards the sky as you bring your right knee to stack over top of your right ankle. And then find an open arm twist. So you're twisting here towards your bent knee, right fingertips pulling towards the back edge of your mat, left fingertips pulling forward and working to spiral your heart space towards the right side of your mat. Inhale as you revolve, you're gonna drop your right fingertips down towards the earth. They may connect, they may not. Left fingertips pull up. And then dial your left hand down for a low lunge twist, keeping that bottom knee planted on the earth. And exhale, right hand drops, half split pose. Right foot comes back down to the earth, plant both feet, tuck your back toes and slide your right foot back into your high plank. Flow through your variation of chaturanga. And when you're ready, lift through cobra or upward facing dog. And then press your hips high and back into downward facing dog. Gaze comes forward, drag your left foot forward this time as you drop your back knee to the earth. Same option, keep your back knee tucked or bring the top of the foot flush to the earth. When you're ready, fingertips lift, 90 degree bend through your left leg. And then exhale, open up into that twist. This time chest is spiraling towards the left. Fingertips are pulling away from one another. Left thigh keeps squeezing in towards the midline. When you're ready, revolve. So left fingertips drop down, right fingertips pull up. And then exhale, right hand plants, low lunge twist, back knee stays connected to the earth. Left hand lowers down, half split, bump your hips back. Pull your left toes up towards your nose. Left foot comes forward, plant through both hands and find your chaturanga or option to straight back, uh, step straight back into downward facing dog, your choice. Struggling with my headphones today. Keep falling out. All right, take a breath here. And as you exhale, gaze is gonna come back in between your hands, right foot follows, so step it all the way up. Option to keep that back knee lifted for this variation or go ahead and lower it down for the exact same sequence we did before. If your back knee is lifted or lowered, you're gonna go ahead and lift your fingertips up. Find that 90 degree bend again through the right leg. And then just like we did with our knee lower down, we're gonna open up into an open arm twist. Keep the bend through your front leg, fingertips pull away from one another. Really press the energy out through your left heel. Notice that length that that creates in the back of your left leg. And then revolve as you drop your right fingertips towards the earth, pull your left fingertips up. And exhale, left hand dials down, low lunge twist. Find a breath and exhale, right hand plants down, straighten through your front leg. Pyramid pose, or if you're lowered on your knee, you can do the same half split that we did the first round through. Try to really surrender your upper body towards the top of your thigh. Then re-bend through your front leg. Step your right leg back, high plank pose. Step back straight into downward dog or find your chaturanga. Mm. 
will all meet back in Downward Facing Dog. However you choose to travel there is great. And you probably guessed it, left foot's going to come forward, so bring your gaze in between your hands, slide your left foot all the way up. Same option as on the other side, back knee can be lifted or lowered, your choice. Use your inhale to draw your fingertips up, upward current of energy pulls you up, and your exhale reminds you to bend deeply through your left leg, once again creating that 90 degree bend. Open up into your open arm twist. Fingertips pull away from one another. Spiral your chest as far to the left as you can here. So a lot going on, a lot of strengthening through your front leg, lengthening through your back leg as you press your heel away, and twisting through your center as you spiral your chest towards the left. Then go ahead and drop your left fingertips, pull your right fingertips up. And exhale, low lunge twist, right hand drops down, left fingertips pull up. Next breath, left hand drops down, straighten through your front leg, either coming into your pyramid pose or your half split. Rebend through your front leg, step your left foot back, high plank pose, and you know your options, any variation to travel back to downward facing dog. Once you land on your downward facing dog, we're gonna be here for a few breaths. So make any little adjustments that you might need. Really feel a firm foundation underneath your finger pads. We brought a little bit of attention to them at the very beginning in our seated meditation. So bring that same intention to your finger pads here. Then start to travel that awareness, that intention up your arms, your upper back, all the way up towards your hips as you pull them towards the sky. And then a grounding exhale travels down the backs of your legs, pulling your heels even closer to the earth underneath of you. Notice where your gaze is. If it's forward, you're probably crunching through the back of your neck. You really want to allow it to be nice and heavy here, so it could be helpful to shake your head yes and no. Just let go of the tension, the need to hold or to control. And then when you're ready, bring your gaze in between your hands and you can take steps or one giant hop into your forward fold. When you're ready, lift up halfway. And then use your exhale to come back into your fold. Reverse swan dive, keep your knees bent as you swim your fingertips all the way up towards the sky. Then begin to straighten through your legs, micro bend through your knees. And exhale, draw your palms towards heart center. Press your thumb knuckles against your sternum. Nice, straight, long spine as you reconnect to your breath. Take another inhale. And let it go. Exhale. Next, we're going to come into chair pose, so sweep your arms up as you sink your hips low. Feet are about hips width distance apart here, tailbone is tucked under slightly. Option here to lift your heels up for a little bit of a balance challenge. You might play around with one heel, then the other, or keep both lifted. We're here for five, four, three, two, one. Drop your heels straight and your legs forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. And exhale, ground your hands, step both feet back, and find your variation into your downward facing dog. See if you can make however you choose to travel to downward dog some sort of a dance. Find the rhythm of the movement. And then when you're ready, lift your right leg up, three-legged dog. Only lift your heel as high as you can before your hips start to stack. So you want your hips square to the earth. 
Then find that engagement through your glute as you lift your right heel just a little bit higher. And then exhale, pull your knee in towards your chest, half high plank. Just one breath here, inhale. And exhale, step it through into your low lunge. Next, we're going to transition to warrior two. Square down through the outside of your back foot. Spiral your arms open. And again, 90 degree bend through your front leg. Power through your back leg. Really press down through the outside edge of your left foot. And energetically pull your fingertips as far away from one another as you can. Inhale as you revolve. Left fingertips drop down. Right fingertips reach up. And then exhale, side angle pose. Right forearm drops to your right inner thigh. Left fingertips reach all the way up. Big stretch through your QL muscle. This is another really uh, tight muscle that should feel really nice to lengthen and stretch here if you sit throughout your day. Make your breath as expansive as you can. Even through the power that you're building through your front leg. Keep your right knee bent as much as it is right now and use your left oblique to pull you back up through your warrior two. Revolve your warrior. And exhale, spiral your hands down, right foot steps back. Downward facing dog, step straight or chaturanga. I need like super glue to keep these headphones in my ears today. When you're ready, pull your left heel up, keep your hips square. Maybe your left leg reaches a little higher than the right, maybe not quite as high and that's quite all right. And when you're ready, pull your left knee in towards your chest, half high plank. Hover here with your shoulder stacking over your wrists. And then on your exhale, drop your left foot down in between your hands. When you're ready, we'll set up for warrior two pose. Outside edge of the right foot grounds down. Then spiral your arms open to a T. Inhale to revolve. And as you exhale, left forearm comes down to your left thigh. Right fingertip pulls up. Again, we're tapping into that QL muscle here. So see if you can drop your hips down so that you find a really nice diagonal here. And that'll allow you to lengthen that muscle that can get constricted from extra sitting. When you're ready, right oblique engages. Lift yourself back up, warrior two. Inhale as you revolve. And exhale, windmill your hands. Travel your way into downward facing dog. Hips lift up and back. Shake your head out here a little bit side to side. Well, that time my head, oh, there it is. My headphone fell out and I couldn't find it for a second. Whew, these headphones are driving me crazy today. Take another breath. And let it go. When you're ready, you're gonna lift your right leg back up towards the sky into your three-legged dog. And as you exhale, draw your knee in towards your chest, half high plank for one breath. And then a nice big surrender into your half pigeon pose. Right heel drops behind your left hand. Right knee behind your right hand. And then wiggle yourself into a variation that allows you to really, really deepen the stretch through your outer right hip. And then if you choose or when you're ready, you can make your way down to your forearms. 
You can stack your forearms on top of one another, create a little bit of a pillow here for your forehead if you choose. Or you can stay upright in your proud pigeon. Whatever serves you best today. If after a few breaths you're not feeling the stretch quite as deeply as you may like, you can tuck your back toes under, lift your knee, slide it back a little bit further, and then re-release the top of your foot down. Basically, sliding your knee back a little bit will help to deepen the stretch through your right hip. After we settle in, use a couple of breaths sometimes we can create some more space to release or to let go of just a little bit more. After your next breath, go ahead and press your hands back up towards the earth. And exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Then do the same thing on the other side, lift your left heel all the way up. And exhale, draw your knee in towards your chest, half high plank. And then surrender into your pigeon pose. When you're ready, palms are going to come back to the earth. We're going to swing our legs around into a seated posture, just the way we started today. Loop your shoulders, backs of the palms come to the tops of the thighs. Find a breath. And let it go. going to read a meditation practice from one of my favorite meditation books. It's titled, Why Hurry Through? Why hurry through a day, an hour, a life? Hurry never catches up with itself. It misses out, it strains, it stresses. It doesn't trust the natural rhythm, the natural order of the universe. Slow down, tap into the rhythm of the world, Tap into the rhythm as you dance through life, as you dance through eternity. When we hurry, it is, it is as if we are dancing out of step to the music. We become out of sync. Our body strains and stresses, and we stop enjoying life. We are too busy hurrying, racing blindly to somewhere, anywhere. We hurry so fast that when we get there, we don't take time to enjoy it. We simply hurry on to the next moment. 
Step into the music, the rhythm of your soul. The rhythm will lead you where you want to go. It will take you through all the tasks that need doing. It will take you down the road to spiritual growth, healing, fulfillment, and joy. And you'll have more fun going there because you weren't in a hurry. Continue to rest the backs of your palms on the tops of your thighs. Take another big breath in. And an open mouth exhale. Let it go. Palms connect in towards your heart space. May the light in me honor the light in you. Namaste.